All right, now that we have introduced logarithmic functions and we've talked about some basic properties, let's work on graphing them. All right, we want to graph f of x equals 3 to the x and log base 3 of x in the same rectangular coordinate system. All right, so what I want to do is I want to work on the inverse relationship with you guys. So I'm going to set up a table of f of x equals 3 to the x coordinates. All right, so we plug in negative 2, and again, we get 1 over 9, all right, or 1 over 3 squared, which gives us 1 over 9. Plug in negative 1, and we get 1 third. Plug in 0, and we get 1, and plug in 1, and we get 3. All right, so we're working just with the exponential function. All right, we are going to reverse these coordinates for the inverse function log base 3 of x. Remember the key I beat in your head about inverse functions, domain and range flip. And so the blue table I've simply copied over to this slide showing you the exponential function domain and range, and I'm simply flipping x and y for log base 3 of x. Okay, so again, I just flipped the x's and y's, all right, to get the purple table. All right, and then I'm going to plot them in this graph, okay? So the red function, I have my negative 1, 1 third. I have my, um, let me grab my pen. I have my negative 1, 1 third point. I have my 0, 1 y-intercept, and I have my 1, 3 coordinate. All right, I flip x's and y's. So I now have 3, 1, 1, 0, and 1 third negative 1. All right, so let's talk about the basic characteristics of the blue graph that we see here. Okay. All right, well, remember, what did I say about inverses? Domain and range flip. Okay, so for the exponential function, the domain was everything, which means now the range of the logarithmic function is everything, or negative infinity to infinity. Recall for the exponential function, the range was zero to infinity, so that means now the domain of the logarithmic function was zero to infinity. Okay, the graphs of all logarithmic functions all right, that have not been shifted or translated, all right, basic logarithmic functions, have an x-intercept at 1 and no y-intercept. Recall, this is the complete reverse of what we saw with exponential functions, where we had a y-intercept at 1 and no x-intercept. All right, here in 3, if b is greater than 1, all right, then our function has a graph that goes up to the right and is increasing. Whereas if we get a fraction, all right, then the graph goes down to the right and is decreasing. Okay, again, it's just reversed from what we saw with the exponentials. And then the graph of f of x equals log base b of x approaches but never touches the y-axis. In other words, with exponential functions, we had a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Well, that gets flipped. And it's now, in logarithmic functions, a vertical asymptote of x equals 0, or the y-axis. All right, here's a summary table for you guys so you can see and understand the inverse relationship. All right, how the domain and range, shoot, give me my pen how the domain and range flip, okay, from exponential to logarithmic functions, as well as how the horizontal asymptote becomes a vertical asymptote for logarithmic. All right, here's an example or a pro simple problem that we want to make sure we can solve. Finding the domain of f of x equals log base 4 of x minus 5. All right, well, what are we going to do? The domain of f consists of all x for which x minus 5 is greater than 0. So I'm solving the inequality of where I take what's inside my logarithm, x minus 5, and set it greater than 0. And so in solving this, I get x has to be greater than 5. All right? In other words, the domain of f is 5 to infinity. Okay? Now, 
Let me ask you a question. If I hadn't walked you through the domain part and I simply said, what is the translation on this logarithmic function? Is it a vertical move of 5? Is it a horizontal move of 5? And since it's on the x in parentheses, you all should know that this is 5 to the right. All right? So what we're doing is we are shifting our basic logarithm base 4 of x to the right 5 units. So where our vertical asymptote was 0, now our vertical asymptote is x equals 5. All right, and again, all points on the graph of f have x coordinates that are greater than 5. All right, let's go through a summary of transformations. All right, I just want to write it out for you um, in equation form. All right, so if we want a vertical translation up, we're going to add c on the outside of the logarithm. Similarly, if we're going down, we're going to subtract c on the outside of the logarithm. There's no parentheses, right guys? However, for the horizontal translation, I'm going to subtract c to the x in parentheses. In other words, the minus c happens on the x inside the logarithm. So this is a horizontal shift to the right. Similarly to the left, we add c to the x inside the logarithm. What about if we want to reflect over the x-axis? Well, see yourself stepping over the x-axis. What has to change sign? The y's. And so we stick a negative out in front of the logarithm. What about if we want to reflect over the y-axis? Well, see yourself stepping over the y-axis. What is changing sign? It's the x's, right? And so we need to stick a negative on the x inside the logarithm. All right, vertical stretching or shrinking adds a coefficient c to the logarithm itself, whereas horizontal stretching and shrinking adds a coefficient c to the x inside the logarithm. All right, I hope this helps understand transformations. I won't spend too much right time in the homework right now graphing um, logarithms. I want you to focus on being able to graph exponentials and translating them. With logarithms, we will be dealing some uh, with those domain questions.